In previous videos in this playlist, we discussed the different types of chemical bonding, and in particular, covalent bonding, what it is, the definition, and how to represent it by using Lewis dot diagrams. And we focused on compounds or molecules that have single bonds. So that means that they share one pair of electrons, creating a single bond. So for example, over here, the chloride molecule over here, chlorine, you can see that there's one pair of shared electrons. You can see the dot and the cross representing one pair, therefore single bond. Same thing over here with hydrogen, one pair of electrons that are shared, therefore creating a single bond. If you missed those videos, check out the links in the description box below. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on multiple bonds. So how is a double bond formed? How is a triple bond formed? And obviously, I hope that it makes sense that if a if two atoms are sharing one pair of electrons, it forms a single bond. If two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons, it forms a double bond. And if they're sharing three pairs of electrons, it forms a triple bond. So let's jump right into some examples. Starting off with a double bond. So as I mentioned, sharing two pairs of electrons forms a double bond. And the first example that I'm going to start off with is oxygen, O2. As you know, oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so it consists of O and O. Now, when you start drawing a Lewis dot diagram for me, you need to start with each atom that forms the molecule or the compound. So in this case, it's oxygen and oxygen. And you need to know the valence electrons of each of those atoms. Because remember, it's the valence electrons. The valence electrons, not all the electrons, the valence electrons that we represent as crosses or dots surrounding the atom. So as I mentioned in the previous video, we get the valence electrons, which are also called the outer electrons, and we get them from our periodic table. We use the Roman group numerals. So if you look at the periodic table over here, these big red numbers over here, the Roman group numerals, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Let me erase that so you can see the big red numbers. Okay, those correspond to the Roman group numerals. That's these little numbers up here. And that is the number of valence electrons for that particular atom. So if you look at sodium, one valence electron. If you look at aluminium, three valence electrons, and so on. So I'm dealing with oxygen, O2. So I need to look for oxygen. It's over here. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So I did write that over here. I said oxygen has six valence electrons. And if you can recall again from the previous videos in this playlist, that each atom needs to reach what we call octet structure. Now, yes, there are exceptions to this rule. Hydrogen cannot reach octet structure. So octet means eight, if you can recall. Oct, like an octopus or octagon, means eight. So most atoms need eight valence electrons in order to reach their stable state okay filled valence electron shells filled orbitals hydrogen only needs two the rest need eight there are exceptions but we're going to focus on the non-exceptions right now so they need eight oxygen each oxygen atom has six so how do we get from six to eight well each each oxygen atom needs two more so how we draw the Lewis dot diagram is as follows. We draw each atom. So O2 has two oxygens, one oxygen plus an additional oxygen. Each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. And I was asked a question in the previous video, very good question. Do I just place the valence electrons randomly around the oxygen? I have mentioned this before, but think of the oxygen as being in a little box, uh, a little cube. There are one, two, three, four sides to the cube. So what you're going to do is you're going to start filling the electrons from the top. So you go, for example, there's six. So we go one, two, three, four. So each side of the oxygen technically gets one. And then you start at the beginning again. Five, six. I hope that makes sense. So it'll look something like this. One, two, three, four. And then you start at the top again. And it doesn't actually matter if you go clockwise or clockwise or anti-clockwise. It really doesn't matter. Five, six. Okay, that's how you fill it out. Same thing here. One, two, three, four. So each side technically gets one. Then you start at the top again. Five, six. So they need eight in order to reach an octet structure. 
So these two spaces here, this one has six. This one has six, as we've already mentioned. That means that this one needs two more. And this one needs two more. Now, the easiest way to think about it is if you need two more, you're going to have to create a double bond because you need two more. So the oxygen on the left needs two more. It's going to have to share this one and this one with the oxygen on the right. And same thing as this one. The one on the right needs two more. Where's it going to get it from? It's going to share these two. So how it looks is as follows. All the ones that I've highlighted, they will be shared because each of them need two more. They're each going to share two. So how the final molecule looks like is this. You draw your oxygen atoms. The ones that are shared go to the middle. And actually to make it easier, we should probably change these from crosses to dots just so we can see um, which where, the, where each one's electrons come from. So like that. So I'm going to be sharing these two and those two yellow ones. The ones that are shared go to the middle. So like that. Those are the two yellow ones that are shared there. And like that, those are the two green ones that are shared over there. The rest you just place around the oxygen atoms like normal. So these two at the top stay at the top. These two on the side stay on the side. Same thing here. These two at the top stay on the top. These two on the side stay on the side. Now, what I want you to do is just check with me. See if this makes sense. See if each of them now have eight. So look at the oxygen on the left. It has one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Whatever's in the middle belongs to both of them. So the fox, for the oxygen on the right, we've got one, two, three, four. Then whatever's in the middle also belongs to it. Five, six, seven, eight. So now they each have eight. So they have reached their full stable structure. And if you can take a look in the middle, we can see that two pairs of electrons have been shared. That's one pair, that's a second pair, and that's where the double bond comes from. That's why oxygen looks like this and we can draw the lone pairs in like this lone pairs mean that they are not bonding pairs like that so there's the double bond right now i'm going to try the lewis structure or the lewis dot diagram for carbon dioxide now as you should know carbon dioxide looks like this di means two so two oxygens so we know we're going to have a carbon we're going to have an oxygen we're going to have an oxygen one of these needs to go in the center of the molecule because I only have one carbon and two oxygens, it makes sense for the carbon to be in the middle and the oxygens to be on the outside. Another trick that can help you find out which atom should be in the middle is take a look at their electronegativity. Now, as your periodic table says, the electronegativity is the sideways number. So carbon is 2.5 and oxygen is 3.5. The one with the lowest electronegativity usually goes in the center. So in this case, it would be carbon. Then remember, we are drawing the Lewis dot diagram, so we need valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six. So what I'm doing now is I'm showing you the formation of carbon dioxide. So I'm saying this plus this plus this gives me, and I'm then I'm giving the final answer. If they just ask for the lowest structure of carbon dioxide in your test, you don't have to do the whole formation, but I think it's useful in order to explain. Okay, so carbon has four. Okay, four. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Oxygen each has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This oxygen also has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just take note how the ones on the outside, I'm giving them different symbols to the one on the inside, just so I can see where the electrons are coming from. So what we have is as follows. Oxygen, because they each have six, they need two more, because remember, six plus two gives me eight. Carbon has four, it needs four more. So what this basically means is that carbon needs four. It needs to share four. So these two from this oxygen and these two from the other oxygen need to basically be shared with carbon. And it also makes sense that carbon will then share these electrons with this one and carbon will then share these electrons with this one. Why? Because each of these oxygens need two more. So if the oxygen on the left shares those blue ones, it'll then have eight. 
If the oxygen on the right shares these pink purple ones, it'll then have eight. So the final structure looks like this. Remember the shared electrons go to the middle, in between the two atoms. What I've done on my final diagram is I've kept the highlighting the same so you can see where the electrons are coming from. So the, this purple one over here, pink purple, and this yellow one over here, those were pulled to the middle and they are now shared. So the pink purple one and the yellow one belong to both this oxygen and the carbon. And then the blue and green one that is being shared between these two atoms. So if you count the electrons around each of the three atoms, each of them have eight. And just to show you, that is a pair of electrons. So that's one pair of electrons. That is a pair of electrons. So two pairs of electrons. So we have a double bond between that oxygen and that carbon. And then over here, that's a pair of electrons. So that's one bond. That's a pair of electrons. So that's another bond. So we've got two double bonds in carbon dioxide. Then what about a triple bond? So Triple bonds will, will happen when we have three pairs of electrons that are shared. A good example of this is nitrogen, N2. And if you look at the periodic table, you will see that nitrogen each has five valence electrons. So five, how many does it need to reach octet structure? Needs three more. So if I draw my nitrogen, so each have five, one, two, three, four, five. This nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five. So has five, needs three more. So they each need three. They're going to have to share with each other. So basically, these three over here, which are currently alone, they're single, they can share with the, the nitrogen on the right. And these three over here, they're currently single, standing alone, they can share with the nitrogen on the left. And remember, Everything that is shared goes to the middle. And again, I keep doing it, but try and use different symbols just so you can see from which atom which electrons come from. So the three crosses go to the middle. The three dots go to the middle. They're all being shared. And then this lone pair, we just write it over there. This lone pair, we just write over there. And there we go. Each nitrogen now has eight electrons. So you can count. So the nitrogen on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing for the nitrogen on the right. And let's just do a bond check. So we've got one pair of electrons there. That's one bond. Second pair of electrons. That's second bond. Third pair of electrons, triple bond. So we've got a triple bond for nitrogen. I want you to try this one yourself. So this is HCN, hydrogen cyanide, which is quite a dangerous liquid that can turn into a gas, can form cause very bad harm, but anyway, HCN. So it's made up of hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Try this Lewis dot diagram yourself, pause the screen, and then I will do it with you. In this case, it's very difficult to see which one goes in the middle. And that is kind of a very good starting point. So we've got hydrogen, which has one valence electron. We've got carbon, which has four valence electrons, and then nitrogen, which has five valence electrons. And remember that little trick I told you earlier about the one with the lowest electronegativity generally goes in the middle. It doesn't really work with hydrogen because although out of the three, hydrogen has the lowest electronegativity with 2.1 compared to 2.5 and 3, hydrogen also only needs two electrons to reach its full outer structure, a full valence shell. Remember, hydrogen needs two, but the rest need eight. So it doesn't make sense for hydrogen to go in the middle. So between carbon and nitrogen, carbon has a lower electronegativity. So let's try and put carbon in the middle. So what I've done is I've drawn the little individual Lewis diagrams for hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. Now we must figure out how the electrons are going to be shared. And it's based on how many they have and how many they need. So hydrogen has one. It needs one more. Carbon has four. It needs four more. Nitrogen has five. It needs three more. So because hydrogen only needs one more, it needs to share. It needs to share with someone. So it makes sense that hydrogen is going to share one electron with carbon, which is next to it. So basically, this one, this electron, will be shared with carbon. This electron will be shared with hydrogen. And then it makes sense that carbon and nitrogen also share, because nitrogen needs three more. Where's it going to get it from? These three over here. That one, that one, and that one. 
And then if you think about it, carbon will then have enough as well. Remember, it needs four extra. So it's going to get one from the hydrogen, which it's going to share with the hydrogen, and three with the nitrogen, which it's going to share with the nitrogen. So it should look like something like this. There we go. And if you take a look at that carefully, you should see that it is actually a triple bond. One, two, three between the carbon and the nitrogen. So a triple bond there and a single bond between the hydrogen and the carbon. Of course, with the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. And there we go. I hope that's been helpful. Remember, for more bonding practice, ionic bonding, metallic bonding, all those things, check out the links in the description box below. I'll see you for another video very soon. Bye, everyone.